Hey guys, today we're gonna rebuild the 65 VW Beetle. We're gonna get this beam hoist it up and get it on a stand. I'm gonna go ahead and get the pan out of the way for now. Yeah, those are worn out. suckers are in there been in there for uh, almost 60 years long time Get the steering box off of here.
reverse threads on the uh, driver's side. Pretty nasty. Hopefully, this won't be going back on if we go to uh, disc brakes. Yeah. All right, guys, the next few videos, uh, you might actually see a couple product review videos. That's going to help pay for some of these parts. Hopefully, it'll help pay for the, for the disc brake conversion. That would be awesome. But I'd appreciate if you watched those videos and if you uh, checked out the products. If it's something you like. Please purchase some because that'll help. Uh, I'll get a little bit of commission off of that and it'll help buy some parts. Let's see if we can get these spacers off of here. They're on there pretty good. I'm gonna get it off so we clean this up. But there's dirt and grease underneath it, it's kind of holding it in there. Got it. Got it. I don't know if you need this when you go to a disc brake conversion. I'm, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll have to check it out. If you guys know, comment below. All right, let's get that sway control bar off. Do it. Okay, so if you're trying to save these, obviously you don't want to do that, but these are almost 60 years old and sure they could be cleaned up and reused, but they have a kit with new cushions and brackets for $20. And uh, <laughs> instead of fighting this, these are hard to get off. Just cut them off, it's a lot easier. Cut right through that layer. The new ones aren't gonna be all rusted and nasty. Let's just slide right on there. Sway bar off. See these cushions? 
they're uh, hard as a rock. They're supposed to be kind of soft, a little bit soft to absorb some of the looseness in the steering. It is cool, they're original, but these things just wear out like shocks or whatever. All right, guys, we're getting there. It's a lot, a lot of caked on dirt, grease from over the years. And it's in here pretty good. Um, we're gonna take it outside, hit it with the pressure washer, scrub it with some brushes, and just keep going. Let's do it. Right, it's getting there. We pretty much knocked off all the loose dirt, grease, grime, rust. I'm gonna do the same thing to the transmission. Let's do it. Let's get these shocks off, starter, and anything else on here we can get off. I'm glad I got the cardboard here. Look how thick it is. We're gonna get all this off. Transmission mounts, these are all worn out. That thing was a mess. Look at all that grease and dirt. Oh, what a mess. All right guys, we got the whole tunnel chassis covered with OSFO. We'll let this sit overnight, do its thing, come back tomorrow, scuff it up, and get ready to weld the pans on. For you, it'll be a split second.
All right, it's the next day and the Osfo is all dried up. That's what it left behind. Let's get it cleaned up. Just gonna knock off some of this loose Osfo and blow it off and flip it over. All right, guys, let's see if we can get this hole here. Got all rusted out. Let's see if we can clean this up a little bit. All right, that came out pretty good. Now we just gotta put a new patch in there. <laughs> so it's, you know, you could keep going, but this isn't that bad. It looks bad, but it's really not. It's really solid all the way up to this point here and here. So that's what we're gonna do. You can see here the where the main hole was. I mean, this is really thick steel too. So probably, would have been fine you know if you just wanted to do a quick fix you probably could have just put a little bit of seam sealer over that hole and would have been fine it's not uh you know not a big deal but i thought it'd be fun to try to put a patch in here and see how it goes i may have made a mistake but it is what it is it's all learning experience for me so i'm going to use this cut line and try to get something somewhat close to this. I mean, we could just put a square piece up here and cut another straight line and try to make it perfect. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna do that patch yet, but we will work towards that here in a minute. Um, but yeah, 
I don't know what gauge thickness this is, but it's pretty thick. I mean, this is basically the frame. Let's work on getting this patch made. All right, this is the piece that I cut out. And this was just a square piece I had laying around, straight edge uh, of aluminum. So I don't know if it's a perfect square, but my cut was not perfect. This is a perfect cut right here. And you can see, you can see my cut is off a little bit. So what we're gonna do is cut up about this far, we'll try to keep it as straight as we can. And we'll use this straight edge and try to clean up the hole to make it match. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to get close and I'm leaving a little extra around the sides. We'll see what happens. Let's try that again. Cut it a little too short. I'm gonna clean this middle up a little bit. All right, we cleaned that up and ground down some of the center low point. A lot tighter fit now. All right now I'm gonna try to measure this where this bend starts and we'll put a little bit of a bend on it. See if that'll work. <clears throat> Looking pretty good. We gotta trim some of this lip off. We cut it a little too long, but that's all right.
All right, guys, it's getting there. My gas, for some reason, wasn't turned on. I thought it was, and I started welding. You can see the difference there between a weld with no gas and a weld with gas. So some of them came out pretty good. Some of them are kind of ugly, and some of them are just okay, so. <laughs> The great thing about this is it doesn't matter. No one's gonna see it. I'm just trying to fix a hole and it was a good place to practice doing a patch. This is super thick. This is 18 gauge, but this is probably like, I don't know what this is. 10 gauge, 14, it's pretty thick. So there's a little difference there. You gotta kind of start on the thicker and, and, and move your way over. But there's a few where I hit it right on the gap there and it, it came out pretty good. So not too bad for the first time welding in a while. It's been a while. So this will get me warmed up for doing the pans. Let's finish putting in the, filling in the holes, grind it down a little bit and see if we can put a little piece underneath to close it up. Hey guys, it's getting there. It actually looks pretty good. All those welds are real solid. Knock them down a little bit with the grinding stone and um, hit them a little bit with the 80 grit on here, which I don't know what the difference is between the 80 grit on a die grinder and the 80 grit on a DA, but 80 grit on a die grinder is, it's a lot harder. <laughs> so I don't know why they call it 80 grit. It should be called something else. It feels like 40 grit. Well, I guess that's just the way it is. I haven't figured out why yet. But the stone is good for knocking down the uh, the big welds and trying to get them, you know, a little bit more level. This doesn't have to look perfect. It's not going to be seen. But I will knock these down more, and I'll fill in a couple little holes here and there. And we'll try to mix it, blend it in so it looks real sweet. But before we do that, I'm going to add that bottom piece. And get that on there and uh, see how that goes. Let's flip it over and see what that bottom piece looks like. It's real small, it shouldn't be too big of a deal, hopefully. All right, so it's just this bottom lip that was all rusted out. It was pretty solid here, but right in here was really bad, but we cut that whole section out. Let's see if we can make a piece to go in here. And it's gonna be a small piece, straight. And we can just clean it up and match it up with this piece. Clean this up a little bit and try to get a nice even piece in there. A little discrepancy here. It just kind of dips here, comes up here dip down there, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to get it manageable. Um, so this is like one, just over one centimeter. Is that a millimeter? Millimeter. Inch. Let's see, that is basically a half inch. is our lowest point. Goes up pretty far there. Let me see if I can get that down a little bit more.
bad, not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, that's looking pretty good. So on the other side, we need to we need to mark this side and kind of come up with a, a line. Cut that. It's not gonna be perfect, guys, but it'll be close. Let's see if we can cut that line. See if this will work. Nope, they're both off. The depth of the puncture, hole puncher is not correct to match up to this. So we're just gonna have to weld it. All right, it's coming out pretty good. I'm gonna fill in those little punch holes. It's not a big deal. We'll grind these down. We'll fill in any other spots that I missed. We'll clean this up real good. You won't even be able to tell hardly. We're gonna put epoxy primer over this. We're gonna put gloss black. And if we need to, we can put a little seam sealer in here. But yeah, not bad for uh, someone that doesn't really know what he's doing. <laughs> Learning every day, guys. Learning every day. And your comments help, so please comment below. I know some of you guys are going through the same uh, same journey, and some of you have already been through it. So comment below. Let me know what you think about the progress on the 65 Beetle. We are going to put the pans in this week. This week's going to be huge. The pans, the front beam, the transmission, epoxy primer, and gloss back <laughs> and gloss black hopefully is all going to come together this week you see we got the beam all torn apart so yeah it's going to be good guys this beam transmission 
The chassis is going to come together full build next week if all goes well. Uh, permitting, you know, the daily thunderstorms and all that stuff. But we are pushing forward, guys. It's exciting. I don't know if you've seen, but I do have the heater channels from Classic Fab. These are the best ones on the market, guys. Beautiful, awesome. Can't wait to put those in. I've never done it before. It's going to be uh, interesting. <laughs> pans I have put in, but I've never put in beetle pans. The good thing is, these are the best pans you can get. Wolfsburg West, very nice pans, very nice heater channels. That's going to be in a couple of weeks when we start working on the body. I hope you guys are digging it. I hope you guys are liking it. I'm going to clean this up a little bit more and figure out if I should put holes or what here. But that might be included in the next video. Uh, it's about the storm here. So if not, I'll keep working on it. We got it down to uh, about the same level. We'll clean it up a little bit more with the um, the 80 grit roll lock. And then we will weld that together. We'll clean up all these welds, fill in any holes that we missed. There's a hole there. We'll fill all those in, clean it up really good. And hopefully it'll look, uh, you know, somewhat like it doesn't look like anything. All right, not too bad for an amateur. Not too bad. It's looking good. You can see where it almost disappeared right here. So, you know, I might need to put a little more weld in here in a couple spots and blend it in a little bit better. But honestly, for this application, that's probably more than enough. The edge here looks really nice. I gotta grind down some more of these Grind this down some more with the grinding disc and smooth it out a little bit more. But overall, it's looking really good. I am super excited about this 65 buck, guys. There's a lot of cool stuff coming up. And um, I hope you guys stick around for the complete build. It's gonna be neat. So, I've never done a patch like this before. I've only done a couple little patches and uh, hey, I think it turned out all right. 
I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube about metal work and I think it's starting to, starting to kind of influence me a little bit. Uh, you just really have to absorb much as much information as you can and get out there and do it. So, you know, I've done a little welding in the past. I welded the pans into the Carmen Ghia and a couple other little things, but this feels really good, especially since I haven't welded in a while to be able to pull this off. Uh, I think it turned out pretty good. Guys, please. I really, really appreciate everybody watching this build. It's so cool that so many people are interested in it. And uh, I'm excited to see how it turns out. And hopefully you guys are too. I've never installed heater channels. I've never worked on a bug. This is my first bug. I did work on my Carmagia, um, but hey, it's a little different, but it's basically the same. So <laughs> it's about the storm. I need to get home. I'm excited. I'll see you guys on the next one. Guys, just to let you know, I have some product review videos coming up and I'd appreciate if you watched them. If it's something you're interested in buying, please buy one. There will be uh, you know, some kind of code that'll give you a little bit off. So let me know if you're interested in those products. And if you did buy one, let me know. I'd love to know. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Here comes the storm. <laughs>